Hey everyone, Craig Ripley here. I hope you were having a great summer. I know I am. I've even broke out the summer hat. Today what I want to do is give everybody an in-depth review of a product I bought last year after I had a little accident on my WR250R here. And that is I want to talk about the Alpine Star Tech 7 Enduro Boot. For those of you who are coming into this new, let me give you a little bit of a background. Last year, about this time, last June of 2020, I was riding the Mid-Atlantic BDR with some buddies and we went through an area that was pretty loose gravel and my bike just lost traction. The rear wheel kicked out on me and I went straight down on my left hand side. I ended up breaking three bones in my left foot as it got caught between my foot peg and the frame of the bike and I ended up tearing all four muscles in my rotator cuff and I ended up needing surgery last October. The boot I was wearing at the time is this one and that is the TCX X Desert Gore-Tex boot. Now this has been actually a good boot for me. I rode this to Alaska. And also I've used it on many other occasions. The problem is, while it's a great boot, it doesn't have a whole lot of lateral support. And because I didn't want to go through this experience again of breaking bones in my foot, I decided that I wanted to beef up my protection a little bit. And after looking around and finding out what the best motorcycle, motocross boot was out there, I decided on this one, and that is the Alpine Star Tech 7 Enduro with Dry Star. Now, most of my riding is touring, whether it be on the road or doing off road stuff such as the Mid Atlantic or Northeast BDR. So, I wanted something that was going to fill those needs as a nice touring boot as well as give me the protection off road. So last year I did a video on my initial impression after buying these boots. I didn't have a chance to ride in them because I was coming up on having surgery shortly after that. And then of course we headed into winter here in New England. And now I'm finally getting a chance to get out and do some substantial riding in them so that I can give you guys a good report. In that last video, I showed you just how much protection these boots really have. I mean, they are just so stiff. It takes a lot of pressure to really bend these boots from side to side. So I've been really, really pleased with that. I've had one get off since riding in these boots. And again, my foot had no problem. I went to the left again, by the way. Uh, but I was able to just step out of it again and it didn't bother my uh, left foot at all. And it still hurts when I walk and so forth. So that is saying a lot that being able to jump off a bike like that, I didn't have any problems whatsoever. I've also found these boots to be quite comfortable to ride in, and particularly while standing, right? They are so stiff that you just do not hardly feel anything while you are standing up on the pegs. Uh, in my other boots that I showed you earlier, I would get fatigued after standing up for a substantial amount of time, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. But in these boots, I could stand up for really long periods of time and with no fatigue to that foot at all. For sizing on these boots, I ended up going up a half a size, and that's something that I typically do on European-made boots. I wear a 10 and a half, but I have a wide foot. It's usually like a double E. So I go up to an 11, which is a 45, 45 and a half in European sizing. As far as that comfort goes, I will tell you two things that you need to be aware of. One, these things really aren't made to walk for long distances in. They're not uncomfortable to walk in, but you know, walking in and out of store or in and out of your hotel or you know, around camp, that's one thing, but you know, trying to go hiking in them or something like that, these aren't the boots that you want to do that with. Secondly, the Dry Star tends to be slightly warmer than a comparable Gore-Tex boot. I don't think that it breathes quite as well as the Gore-Tex, but it's not uncomfortable. I have no problem with this Dry Star stuff at all. Another knock on these boots is that they squeak. And that is absolutely true. These are squeaky boots. Right, you are not gonna sneak up on anyone while wearing these boots. But again, that's only while you're walking around and you're gonna wanna do that 
again to a minimum in these boots. So squeak is just something you'll have to put up with. The only way that I got that to decrease was after I've been riding on a dusty trail for quite a while, well the dust seemed to lubricate all of the joints and fittings and then the squeaking really settled down a whole lot. So uh, I guess just keep your boots dirty if you want to eliminate most of that squeak. The other knock on these boots is that because they are so stiff and so protective that they're harder to shift in. And that is true. You are going to have to relearn how to shift your bike in these boots. And I'll go over that here more in just a minute. But it really just takes some, said, relearning, repositioning your shift lever on the bike to get around all of that stuff. Also, what I did to help break these boots in is I treated them like they were a new baseball glove. And that is I really worked them. I wore them, walked them around in my backyard, and then every night for about a week, I just did this. Right? Taking that shifting motion, and I did about 100 reps of this every night, said for about a week, to help loosen these things up. And that seemed to help break them in quicker. So let me show you now what I did to modify how I was shifting while riding this WR. First thing I did was I raised the shift lever so that I could more easily get this thick boot underneath that lever. And I probably raised it up by about an inch or so. All right, the second thing I did was I had to learn how to position my foot on this lever. Initially, what I was doing was trying to shift, right, with this part of my foot. Right, just behind my toes, right, and that just did not give me enough motion to engage all of the gears. Some gears would work, but there are others that have a slightly longer throw, and so I couldn't get those to engage. So what I learned to do is to shift with the tip of my toe. Right, I position my foot here, and I just grab that just enough to get it to move, and now I have slightly more movement in my foot and it's much easier to get uh, the bike to shift properly. Again, and that's basically all I had to do. So just learn to shift with the tip of my toe. Now, being that this boot is so stiff and so protective, you are not gonna have the same feel as you shift the bike, right? You're not gonna feel that lever, you know, catch into place that little bit of a clunk as you shift and go between each gear. All right, so you're just going to have to get used to that. You're going to have to listen to the bike more uh, to f you know, know when gears have been changed properly. Right? And I'm still getting used to that, but it's a lot easier for me now. So to sum this up, I am very pleased with these Alpine Star Tech 7 Enduro boots. I'd, overall, they give me the protection that I was looking for, and once I really learned how to shift with them, how to make it work properly, then I really, really enjoyed riding in these. Especially that fatigue that I was getting in my feet when I was standing for long periods of time, well, that's completely gone using these boots. Some of my friends have tried the Tech 7s when they were looking for an off-road boot, and they just couldn't hack it, right? They decided that they didn't want to relearn how to shift, and so they went with the Alpine Stars Toucan Adventure Boot, which still gives you a lot more protection than most adventure boots out there, but it has a little bit better feel for shifting and for walking in. So if you really don't want all that protection or don't want to take the time to learn how to ride in these boots, right, then the Toucan might be a good option for you.